Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be building a little bit on the video that I uploaded yesterday and we're going to be looking again at the HD6950. Now, I bought this card on eBay, it was around about $5 and it came bricked. And since then I've been able to unbrick both BIOS chips, uh, you can see the link in the corner if that interests you at all, and also reflash one of those BIOS chips to become an HD6970. Now the 6950 was a little bit special back in the day, uh, this was because the Unlike most GPUs where a manufacturer will take a top-line GPU and fuse some of the cores to downgrade its performance a little and enable it to be sold at a lower price point, the 6950 was essentially a 6970 with a different BIOS, which means all the architecture is in the card to allow it to run is a 6970, but AMD has used a BIOS that only lets the card use 1408 shaders instead of the 6970s 1536. Now, this was only possible in the first run of cards. In later runs, AMD did actually fuse the cores, so it's a bit hit and miss if you actually manage to unlock it. But thankfully, in this GPU, we have managed to unlock it, and because of the switchable BIOS profiles, we've got one set up as a plain old 6950, and on the second switch, we've actually got it flashed as a 6970. So what we're going to do today is we're going to benchmark this card. We're going to benchmark the 6950 and the 6970 profile, and we're going to see if this 6000 series card can actually play any games in 2016. Now, I do understand that you're probably not going to be able to pick one up for $5 and reflash it like I've done, but even on the used market, you can still pick one up for around about $40, $50. So I'll run the benchmarks, and you can decide if at that price point, this card is something that could be for you. So the test rig for this is going to be using the Core i5-4590 and 8GB of DDR3 RAM. The settings that we're going to use for each test is going to be located in the corner, along with the average FPS for both the 6950 and the 6970 BIOS. First up we've got GTA 5. Now at 1080p uh, on the high preset with FXAA and 8x AF, uh, on the 6970, we'll average around about 63 FPS. This dropped a little bit on the 6950 to 59 FPS. It should be noted though that when running on high, we was using almost 2 gigabytes of VRAM. So if you were looking for, say, a 6950, you do get it in the 1 gigabyte variant. And I would steer clear of this. You'll very quickly find that you've actually filled up the VRAM, even though the GPU itself is capable of much, much more. So it's just something to bear in mind. On the remastered Skyrim, uh, on the medium preset with FXAA at 1080p, the 6970 it averaged 42 FPS, and the 6950 again slightly lower at 40 FPS. It was a similar story with Fallout 4. The same settings, 1080, the medium preset, and FXAA enabled. We managed to get 43 FPS on the 6970, whereas the 6950 trailed again by about 2 frames a second at 41 FPS. We run Battlefield 1 at 1080p on the medium preset, and we averaged 47 FPS on the 6970. On the 6950 BIOS, we averaged 43 FPS. So, looking at the results that we've just seen, we're getting really good performance, we're getting much better performance than a console, and as long as you go for a 2GB version, uh, like the card I've got here, you're fine. Now, I've tried flashing the BIOS to a 1GB version and rerun some of these tests, and especially in Grand Theft Auto V, you were really limited to the settings that you could actually run the game, and very quickly filled up that 1GB VRAM buffer. But if you go for the 2GB version, you end up with a really capable gaming card. So, compared to something like that 5850 that I've previously reviewed, I can't actually recommend this GPU. If you're really struck for cash and you've only got that amount to spend on it, if you get yourself a 6950, you can have a lot of fun with it and it actually still turns in a relatively good performance in games. The real life difference between a 6950 and a 6970, it boils down to roughly 5%. So if you can't find a 6970 or one of the original runner cards that you could reflash to a 6970, don't feel too disheartened. As you've seen from these tests, the difference between the two cards these days, it comes down to a couple of frames per second, which you could probably actually reclaim if you overclocked your 6950. But either way, whatever you manage to find, if this card is of interest to you, you're going to be left with a really decent card for the price. Especially when you consider that a comparable card, say for example a GTX 750 Ti, which would offer much and such the same performance, it still probably costs about double this on the used market. So on that note folks, thank you again for watching this. If you liked it, leave a like and hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you again next time.